This is an overview of osteoporotic vertebral fractures. Here's my disclosures. I'm a very conflicted individual, apparently. So we have, um, we often say, we skip over, treat the patient conservatively, they'll be fine, right? Non-surgical management, conservative care. Conservative care implies safety and some degree of efficacy. But when you do something like look at the data for non-surgical management, it's not so good. Uh, this is Kim and Bailey's data with a hard brace or a soft brace for 12 weeks. And this also combines with a brace or no brace for eight weeks for acute fractures. No difference, no difference, no difference, no difference. So Rezwuska did a meta-analysis for optimal pain management. This is the term that was used for optimal pain management. And let me quote the conclusion for the five studies that, that studied non-surgical management or conservative care for osteoporotic fractures. There is insufficient data to recommend optimal conservative management for osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures. So the data on this is not very good at all. So if we look at the papadastasio meta-analysis, this took um, over 1,000 papers to narrow it down to 27 level one and level two papers. This says, that both kyphoplasty and vertebroplasty were very good at reducing pain. Kyphoplasty had better quality of life improvement than, uh, than vertebroplasty. And we look at the Hoyt data, it says kyphoplasty had significant better uh, pain reduction than not only non-surgical management, but also vertebroplasty as well. And this is paired out. So in the Pop and Stasio meta-analysis, comparatively, the kyphoplasty had a little bit better pain reduction than the vertebroplasty. And this is important in terms of cost data, also in terms of effectiveness. And this is a guy that had really great no-brainer conclusions that kyphoplasty was better than non-surgical management in terms of pain reduction and it had tended to have better height restoration than vertebroplasty. And that's a paper that we did a few years back with uh, one of my fellows even before Dr. Clerk, Dr. Warner. And so people talk about this uh, height reduction matter? Does restoration of height and vertebral compression fractures matter? This is Jan von Meyerhegg's surgical free trial that says that divides these into quartiles. The ones with the least amount of height reduction, ones with the most amount of height reduction or height restoration. And this corresponds almost linearly to clinical outcomes in terms of pain, function, and quality of life improvements. Meaning that and keep in mind the degrees of improvement are over there. The kyphoplasty angle is over on your left. So it doesn't take much. It takes four, three, four, five degrees of difference to take somebody from the bottom quartile in terms of clinical performance, clinical improvement, and, and, and put them in the penthouse, the upper quartile. So the, the, how the patients do in terms of pain and functional improvement is directly related to how much height restoration you get back out of it. So how many of you guys have heard about the 2009 New England Journal articles for vertebroplasty? Okay, show of hands, please, if you don't mind. Okay, this is about half the room. So these are comparing vertebroplasty versus sham, and they were negative articles, very popularized in 2009, whenever these came, first came out. Does anybody know another vertebroplasty versus sham article? My, you guys are out, fellow, the uh, faculty don't answer. Does anybody, can anybody name one other vertebral blasty versus sham article? Anybody? Come on. None? Nobody? Well, there's three of them. So one of them is Bill Clark's uh, vapor trial published in the little known journal called The Lancet that was uh, sham versus vertebral blasty that was a positive trial. The other one was Paul Lawley's uh, Vertos 5, a positive trial comparing the treatment of chronic vertebral fractures with the vertebral plastic versus sham. And the other one was Hansen's VOPE trial. So it's, it mystifies me a little bit, and it should punctuate the fact that negative trials get an outsized amount of attention, an outsized, assigned an outsized amount of, proportion, of uh, importance when compared to positive trials. Because let it be known, from where I stand, I did not see one hand go up if, if anybody knew with another vertebral plasty versus sham trial. And there are three of them, and at least one of them is in the journal with the highest impact factor there is, the Lancet. 
So it has a positive effect on mortality. This uh, it encompasses the best literature data, Av Edmund's two papers, Chen, Ansgar Lang, and the paper that we did with the entire Medicare cohort for 10 years, 32 million patients, 2,077,000 patients with fractures, a reduction in mortality of 25% with vertebroplasty, 55% with kyphoplasty. And then Handy that has a mortality reduction of 22% at 10 years. And this is profound, very profound. And here it is kind of in graphic format. And we had the question, how many patients if you treat, if the mortality reduction is 55%, how many patients' lives will you see? What is the number needed to treat? And we took this from the stroke literature. The number needed to treat to save somebody's life. Statistically, at one year, it's 15. So thank you for those of you who do vertebral augmentation. Statistically, you for every 15 patients you treat, you're saving one life. One life at one year. Take that out to five years, it goes down to 12. What else do we do that has something similar? So if you give somebody TPA, a clot buster, in the golden hour for a stroke, MCA stroke, hemiplegia, what's the number to, needed to treat to ameliorate symptoms of that? It's about 15. You would never de de deny somebody a TPA, a clot buster for a, a stroke, but yet we tend to to shunt these people into non-surgical management sometimes with a painful vertebral compression fracture, something that, in my opinion, never, ever should be done. So how can we improve? And this is a talk about not how great we are, but how can we improve the ability to treat compression fractures? Have you ever had one of these happen to you on the upper right to the, to the lower right? Well, it looks okay in terms of augmentation. I can tell you that does not look okay. Right, Dr. Roper? That does not look okay. It's not nearly filled up enough. And to have the middle column collapse is no surprise. Right, Dr. Clerk? No surprise. We know, we know better than this. But this happens in situations that have uh, very high degrees of fragmentation and very much bone resorption within the inner portion of it. You measure the von Mises stresses over the vertebral body after it's been augmented. The vast majority of the stress and strain goes right over the middle column. That's why this happens. If you've not seen this happen, it has seen you. You may not have seen it. This happens. Just follow the patients, and you, you will see this over the time. And it does happen in these patients with high degrees of fragmentation. It happens in these patients with a large cleft. You see this cleft? The height is maintained. See all that fluid in the vertebral body? That is a snake in the grass. That will come up and bite you. And if you don't fill the vertebral body all the way, it, it is very unstable. And this absolutely needs to be treated. This will not heal. Uh, when you CT it, you can see gas in the vertebral body. There's resorption. This is an oligotrophic or hypotrophic nonunion. This has a very high degree of having pedicle somatic junction fractures, pedicle body fractures in a coronal plane. So that's what's associated with this. We need something better. Here's, let, let's look at Mercer's textbook of orthopedics. I put this in there for, for Neil. Or the PX textbook. So it, uh, we can only treat type A fractures and A3.1 fractures with vertebral augmentation. That's what the textbook says. Wait a minute. That's not our experience at all. So grandma falls down. She has a fracture of L1. It's wider coronal plane and wider in a sagittal plane than levels above, level below. What is that? Burst fracture. Would we treat it? Absolutely. Wait a minute. That's a magrel A3.3 fracture. That's supposed to be treated with conservative treatment or fusion, according to the Mercer's Tech Book of Orthopedics. That's insanity. Nobody would fuse her. And if you don't treat her, the natural course of it is it continues to collapse on down. The interdicular segment goes back, and then you get leg weakness. Then you go downhill. Bill Clark's vapor trial had two patients like that that were treated in the sham trial that were not treated with a vertebroplasty that had that fracture fragment go down. There was one case of paralysis, one case that had to have a big decompression and somebody that was, was elderly and not a great surgical candidate at all. So what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to do this, spanning pedicle screw and rod? Well, that has been done, but uh, Neil, correct me if I'm wrong, but your colleagues and you probably don't like to do this for fractures, right? No because it doesn't work very well. Here's a work we did, and this slide's in, in Italian. The work was done in Milan with uh, 
uh, Alessandro Sanfoni. But we measured the grammatic representation here on the left. That's intact. The other one's fractured. And the superior end plate starts to move a lot when it's fractured. Then you can span it with pedicle screws and rods, the third one from your left. And it doesn't reduce the end plate movement very much. It doesn't work that well. And the one on your right, the lines here represent hardware. That is a, a kyphoplasty or vertebroplasty. The one is an implant, the second one from the right. So as you get more hardware, as you have more implants and in the vertebral body, the superior end plate movement goes way down. So what are we supposed to do? This is a device, you don't have to avert your eyes here. This will never see the light of day. It's from, it's from Vexum, Stryker will not produce this for whatever reason. And they're not here, so I can go ahead and badmouth them. So th this is called the pedicle jack. And uh, this is something I, I placed uh, 2016, I think. And uh, this, this will never see the light of day, but it's, it's a combination of pedicle screws and an implant, very, very stable. So what's the deal? I mean, should we all go all the way there or, or should we do something like this? Does anybody know what the image on the lower right-hand corner shows? This is called screw-assisted internal fixation. That's a vertebral body stent made by Johnson & Johnson. This is, an, uh, I think this is an F2 screw or something like this. This is Italian, is that what it's called? Let me, uh, this is, uh, made by an Italian company. And this is very good in terms of internal stability. So what we can do is we can start to abbreviate what we do. We don't need to span with a pedicle screw and rod construct. We can move toward treating the incident level provided there's no dramatic stability above or below that level. So this is an article by Vani that says, well, in addition to Mercer's textbook recommendations, we can start to treat some B-type fractures. And still, this doesn't really resonate with us because we're doing things all the time. This is from the Comprehensive Guide of Vertebral Augmentation. And Stefano Marcia uh, wrote chapter 35.9, and he uses the spine jack to treat all A-type fractures, including magral A3.1s through 3.3s, complete bursts. And he's doing this reliably, doing it repeatedly, and doing it <clears throat> similar to how we do it and just really haven't thought much about it. As we don't, I don't read Mercer's textbook of orthopedics. We just, you know, we have our own textbook. It's this one, and that's a very good one if you would like to get that. And we go ahead and collect data, and this is a paper I wrote with David Noriega, taking 44 consecutive patients with A3 whatever fractures, one through three, and following them up. And so we found something not so shocking. Pain and functional improvement was dramatically and significantly improved. The height was significantly improved all the way from the very beginning, all the way out through 5.6 years. So not only is it good, not only is it it's sustainable, it appears to be permanent or durable, treating uh, as an incident level, magral A3, one through three, three fractures with the standalone spine jack, standalone percutaneous uh, expandable titanium implant. Has anybody seen the V-strut? The V-strut. So uh, <clears throat> this is what it looks like. This is, came from uh, my initial case. The measurement here is the von Mises stresses. And so this does the same thing as screw-assisted internal fixation. It decreases the force in the middle column. And that's the whole thing. It decreases the force in the middle column and the force transmitted above and below. So additional or adjacent level fractures. So out of 24 people treated, there was only two uh, extra fractures, one adjacent level, one non-adjacent level. And so this amounted to 8%. The, the rate of adjacent level fractures is about 25 to 30%. And with spine jack has been shown in the SACOS trial to cut that in half to 12.9%. This cuts it even more by to 8%. And it appears to be that this is reproducible with a combination of scrisis and internal fixation and, uh, and V-strut. Oh, how'd that get in there? Quick, avert your eyes. <laughs> Don't look because it is hip to be square. Uh, <laughs> Coming soon. This is a technique of screw-assisted internal fixation. So you come in flat, the green, not the red. And so you come in at 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock, not 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And as you come in, and this is done in an on uh view, like Dr. Roper will show us, Dr. Uh, Gandhi has shown us, the wire followed by the drill, followed by the contralateral approach, 
followed by placement of the vertebral body stent and inflation, 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 inflation. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And this was done in Europe. We did the adjacent segments here where you can do prophylactic vertebral augmentation. And you add the screws, the cement, and there it is. Very nice. So we need this now. So hopefully we will be, uh, be able to develop this. There's a lot of information, a lot of data supporting screw-assisted internal fixation. And I get asked this all the time, is it safe to blow up a balloon? Is it safe to put a jack in? Is it safe to do something in the vertebral body because that interpredicular fracture segment is coming back into the cauda equina or the spinal cord? So not only is it safe, the more you reduce the vertebral body, the bigger the canal becomes. This is, this is uh, May Bloom and Vernier had two articles about this, one dealing with the spine jack, the other one dealing with the combination of spine jacks and screw-assisted internal fixation in the vertebral body stent. So reduce the fracture, increase the vertebral height, you will open the canal more. And this is demonstrable, it's been written about, it's in the literature, and it's something we see not infrequently. And so safe, as I mentioned, for severe osteoporotic fractures, neoplastic fractures, and extensive uh, lytic lesions and prominent lysis. This is very good. So we don't need to do pedicle jacks on everybody with unstable fractures. We can do the combination of the least invasive thing to treat the incident level fracture with screw-assisted internal fixation, bridging the middle column and decreasing the stress and strain on everything else. So not only is vertebral augmentation one of the best things that you do, it is probably the best thing that's done. I remember Neil telling me that in his surgery center, he measures things uh, that they do to the spine, and they do you know, everything with the spine. And the number one thing in terms of patient satisfaction and outcome was vertebral augmentation. Still remember that. So it's the only thing that you will do that's demonstrably life-saving and life-prolonging. Keep that in mind. And it's overwhelmingly supported by literature data. So my, my message to you is do more vertebral augmentation. The patients will love you for it. All right.